So when you first log into your Google account, you may have a pop-up that gives you the opportunity to learn a little bit more about Google. And uh, in this case, you might be able to take a tour and it would show you step-by-step step some of the, uh, the different features of Google. That's pretty common throughout all of the Google products. For example, when you, when you create your first email message, you might get a pop-up that shows you what all the different icons mean, gives you the, opp the opportunity to go to a website or view a video, or to say that you've got it and you don't need to see this anymore. When you first log in, if your inbox doesn't show, go over to the app icon and choose Mail. This is how we go back and forth between the different components of our Google account. You'll notice that your name appears here with your full address. When you click on it and then choose Account, you have the opportunity to go into Security and change your password. You can also set up some recovery email so that if you forget your password or for some reason you can't get in, uh, information will go to your other mailbox. Across the top, now you'll see the different tabs, so I can close out of that. I'm back to my in inbox. There's my Google Drive where my documents are stored, and I can go back and forth this way. Or I can click on the mail or inbox or go back to the app switcher. Either one, I'll get you back to, the, the, uh, your, to your email. One of the things you'll notice right from the start is that Google uh, Gmail does not have flags across here when you have an incoming uh, email like we have in first class. Instead, you'll see that unread messages are bold. Those that have been read are no longer bold, and they also get a, a slightly gray uh, line that um, shows that they've been read. There's a lot of different ways of configuring the inbox. I'll show you a little bit of it in this video. Uh, we'll do a little bit more of the personalization of your uh, account uh, in the, the second video. One of the things that you can do right from the start is do a search. So if I wanted to find a part of an email, let's say that has to do with first class, I could select it and I see an email that uh, was sent by Brian that has to do with first class. If I have a lot of emails where um, that particular search word appears, I can further filter it by clicking on this little arrow and then finding uh, other parameters to filter it even further. When I go back to my inbox, you'll see that there are some uh, a few options across the top. One allows me to check everything or to deselect it. This is a refresh button. And this gives me the chance to mark everything as already being read. I can control how many emails show up on the screen. This navigates to um, those older emails versus the newer, so it is a quick uh, scroll between the, the pages. You're going to find that there are a lot of settings inside of the, the little gear, and that's going to be universal throughout uh, most of the products that you use, but especially uh, Google, in terms of how you're going to configure things, how you're going to maybe set up themes or other settings. Okay, one of the settings while we're right here, I'll show you that I like for the inbox is to uh, go into settings, choose the inbox, and what I like to do is change the inbox type to one that is split between what's read and what hasn't been read. So in this case, I want the unread items in the first section, the read items in the second section. So now when I go back to my inbox, save the changes, and now you see that I have a separation between what's been read and what hasn't been read, and I can open and close them. And I kind of like this look. It helps uh, me identify immediately which ones I haven't, I haven't gotten to yet. Some of the um, low, uh, icons you might see on the side, 
This would, of course, indicate that there is an attachment on this particular email. This email indicates that it's a calendar item. So in this case, I've been invited to a particular meeting, and I can RSVP directly through my, uh, the email. You'll also notice that in some cases, you may have a number showing here. This is called the conversation um, where if you send an email to someone or you respond to an email and then they respond back and you're going back and forth with your emails, by default, your Gmail account is going to group those into what's called a conversation. And when you open up that conversation, you can follow the different um, responses back and forth. Right? And that's a setting that's on there by default. You can turn the uh, conversation settings off so that it does it strictly uh, chronologically and not by conversation. So that'll be in a future uh, video on, on configuring and personalizing your, your uh, Gmail. You know, one of the things that we normally do, obviously, with, with email, we receive, we send, we forward, we reply. And so uh, we'll talk about that for a little bit. If I have a, um, an email that I'm going to read, I have the option of replying. And if I reply, it's going back to the person who sent it to me. I can select the more drop down. And in this particular case, this was only sent by one person. So let me go back and find one that was sent to a lot of people. Uh, so this one would be. So I have the option then of replying or selecting more and replying to all. If I want to forward it, I can forward the email. Then there are obviously other um, options that I have in here to to tag it or to uh, to see other other bits of information about it. So I return back to my inbox. When I create a new email from scratch, I click on compose. As I start typing the person's name, it'll auto populate people in our uh, PLSD uh, domain and you want to be a little bit careful about this because uh, it's possible that you might also have uh, students names come up in here too so um, keep that in mind as you're as you're typing in the person's person's name and selecting who you want to send it to carbon copy blind carbon copy just like we have in, uh, in all emails if you need to CC other people on it or make it a blind CC so that no one sees that uh, other people are being copied on it, you would select one of these. You put in your, your subject. and then you would hit send. Now you notice as I'm typing, over here it's showing one draft. Even without me doing any saving, it's saving any of my drafts. And if I close it and I come back to it later, I can now select it and I can continue All right, so then when I go ahead and hit send, it would um, remove it from the drafts folder and put it into the sent mail folder. And I'll just leave that as a draft right now. I don't think she needs to have that email. There are some real basic sort of ways that you can uh, tag or flag your particular ones. If you want to put stars on certain ones, then it's very easy then to select um, those that just have stars, right? So I select the starred and there they appear. One of the problems we had with first class was that we had limited storage space and we therefore had to go in and make sure that we deleted a lot of our emails. With Google, we don't have that limitation. Uh, so there's unlimited storage on it, but there are still gonna be emails that you know you don't need and you can go in, select the email, read it, and then hit the trash can and delete it. In other cases, there's some 
emails you may have that are just sort of maybes. You don't necessarily need to see it all over your email. You don't necessarily need to, uh, or see it in your inbox, or you don't necessarily need to put it into a folder. But for right now, you just sort of want to hide it so that you don't see it, and you can always go back and get it later. And that's where archiving comes in. So you can select multiple email messages, and then you can go up to the archive icon. And when you click on the archive, you'll see that those email messages now have disappeared from my inbox. If I want to see them again, I come over to More, go back to All Mail, and now all of them will show up again. And I can go back and select them and move them back to my inbox if I need to. Whoop, these are already in my inbox, but these are some who, that aren't in my inbox. There's one, there's one, and now I can move them back to my inbox. All right, so archiving sort of hides those email messages. Uh, going back in and showing all mail brings them back, and therefore they're, uh, they're not completely deleted, but you don't have to deal with them any longer. They're not showing up in your inbox or in folders.